I want to start with the Iran deal. Um, it took a decade uh, of worldwide sanctions against Iran um, to get Iran to come to the table to make this deal, which I know you and the president feel is inadequate. Can you explain to me how you're going to be able to get Iran to agree to a new, tougher deal without the participation in sanctions of China and Russia and Europe? Well, I think you have to start first with the fundamental deficiencies of the deal itself. Uh, it would not stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons. Quite the contrary, it provided cover for Iran to continue its efforts. Uh, and if it had continued, it would have given Iran extraordinary economic benefits uh, without any guarantees of Iranian performance. So the rationale for getting out of the deal is that it was contrary to American national security interest when we entered into it, and it hadn't gotten any better with age. Can I just, can I just propose for one second? When you say it provided cover for them to create an, a, a, a nuclear program, you're talking about the sunset provisions that allow Iran, I'm, I'm just seeking clarity here, the, uh, that allow Iran in seven or eight years to commence again a nuclear energy program? Well, I think the sunset provisions were clearly a mistake, but I think uh, Iran had never made a strategic decision to give up nuclear weapons. I think it was testing the limits uh, of the deal's provisions, exceeding them in some cases. Uh, its ballistic missile program, which continued essentially unchecked, uh, was proof that what they were seeking was delivery systems for the nuclear weapons. So the president has to make a decision uh, where America's national interests lie, and it did not lie in continuing this deal. Now, the consequence of the United States getting out of it uh, is to reimpose all American sanctions as they were before the deal came into effect. And I think what we've seen is that uh, Iran's economic condition is really uh, quite shaky, so that the effect here could be dramatic. And I think there's another important point here that the president has made. Uh, because of the deal, Iran was able to take advantage of turmoil in the region to advance its interest all across the Middle East, in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, uh, in Yemen, so that the consequences of being able to sell Iranian oil without restriction mm -hmm. on the international market were providing them resources not just uh, for their nuclear program, not just as the world's central banker of international terrorism, but conventional hostilities across the region as okay, well. Okay, so I take your point on that, but still, the United States imposing economic sanctions is a far cry from the United States and China and Russia and Europe imposing economic sanctions. The U.S. essentially, at least as, as of now, going it alone. How will that force Iran back to the table? But we're not going it alone. We have the support of Israel. We have the support of the uh, Arab oil producing monarchies and many others. And the consequences of American sanctions go well beyond goods uh, shipped by American companies because of our technology licenses to many other uh, countries and businesses around the world. As those sanctions kick in, it will have an even broader effect as well. So President Trump said this week that, quote, any nation that helps Iran in its quest for nuclear weapons could also be strongly sanctioned by the United States. Is the United States going to sanction European companies that do business with Iran? I think the issue here is what the Europeans are going to do. If they're going to see that it's uh, not in their interest to stay in the deal, uh, we're going to have to watch what the Iranians do. They'd love to stay in the deal. Why shouldn't they? They got everything they wanted uh, from the Obama administration. Uh, but I think the Europeans uh, uh, will see that it's in their interest ultimately to come along with us. Uh, well, I, with all due respect, I've been speaking to European diplomats, and that's not the impression I get. Well, they, that's, not they, the, that's not the impression now. They, I mean, they say they're going to stay in the deal. And, and they may try to do so, in, in part because I think despite the complete consistency of President Trump to, uh, in his opposition to the deal, opposed to it as candidate Trump, opposed to it as President-elect Trump, opposed to it as President Trump, many people, including apparently uh, former Secretary of State John Kerry, uh, thought that we never would get out of it. Now, I, I don't know uh, how to explain why people could miss what the President was saying. So I think at the moment there's some feeling in Europe that uh, they're really surprised we got out of it, really surprised at the reimposition of strict sanctions. I think that will sink in and we'll see what happens then. The president's very clear. He wants to discuss the larger threat posed by Iran around the region. And this is what he discussed with President Macron. He's talked about it with Chancellor Merkel. He's talked about it with Prime Minister May. Not just Iran's nuclear threat now, the threat in the future. Uh, the ballistic missile programs, and the instability uh, right. that Iran is causing around the region. But with all due respect, I didn't get an answer to the question. Is the U.S. going to impose sanctions on European 
companies that continue to do business with Iran? Uh, I think I did give the answer. Well, you the said answer, we'll see. The answer is it's possible. It depends possible. on the conduct of other governments. Okay. You've